hi this is a manual from parsimony and this video is just giving a short example of how organizing your school district's historical data into master tables and then using code to process all your data requests can save you a, a lot of time and so for this example um, i started out by creating fake educational data um, that adheres to some of the principles talked about in the blog and I'm using the uh, open source uh, program R and uh, this tool called R Studio, which makes it easier to write and manage your R code. And this document that I'm creating here is an R markdown document. Uh, it's a pretty nice document. It allows you to do all of your analysis and uh, report writing in one document and so that you can um, then knit the document into a final product um, such as a, a PDF document or a Word document. And so this really maximizes reproducibility and I'll show what that looks like at the end. So to start out with, um, I'm just going to show you uh, what these um, what these example files look like. And in this case, we have three files, um, an ABC assessment file, uh, that has m multiple rows for each student. Um, there's a column called scale score, uh, a column for the school year, and a column for grade. Again, these are all just fake data. <clears throat> and in this file, each student can have multiple records because they may have taken the assessment multiple times. Um, and again, some of these grades and school years don't line up because I didn't, I didn't spend a terribly long amount of time uh, simulating these data to make sure to make sure that they're all um, consistent or anything like that. Um, there's another file here called the student demographic table and it's got IDs, ethnicities, gender. If you wanted to be able to track uh, demographics that may change or be updated and you wanted to have a historical record you might include a column for a school year here and if you were going to do it more than one uh, once a year you might also have like a semester or something where you were taking snapshots for your student information system and then combining them and uh, for this example also there's this table called the student enrollment which just contains um, more than one record per student their grade and the school year in which they were that grade again uh, grade and school year don't necessarily line up correctly as you can see Um, and so with that, let's say you get an example, or you get a question um, from somebody that asks, you know, what was the average math score of students by ethnicity over the last five years? Now, if you were processing a data request and you typically have your math assessment data spread out over several files, like maybe a single SPSS file for each year of uh, uh, math assessment data. Um, each time somebody asks you a question like this, you'd have to go back and clean the data, combine them, um, put them all together in order for you to do the analysis, uh, which takes up time. Uh, by contrast, if you maintain a file like this, you're only a few steps away to answering that sort of question. And so, um, let's let's look at that example so uh, we can start with the ABC assessment data and um, we have ethnicity information in the student demographic table so we will left join that student demographics will join them by the ID because those fields the ID field exists in both of them, as you can see, student ID here, student ID here. So we're left joining them so we can get ethnicity in there. And so that the resulting table will look like this. Oh, there we go. I have to, I have to load a package here so I can use function. So here's what that resulting table looks like. So now we have the test data and ethnicity in the same table. And now 
Um, because we have all years worth of data for this assessment in this column, and we're just pretending like this is the scale scale a scale score for uh, a math assessment, the one that we care about. Um, at this point, then we can just filter for the school years that we care about. So I'm just going to say school years in uh, we'll say last five years. So. So what would that be 19, 15 to 2019, like that. Um, so that will eliminate the other rows or school years that we do not care about. And then after that, um, we can simply group the data by year and by ethnicity, because we want to look at those data by uh, ethnicity and by year. And then once those data are grouped by those two attributes, we can summarize the data uh, such that we want to end up with an average, we'll call this math score, equal to the mean of the scale score variable, which is this column. And that file will produce something that looks like this. And we can actually save that. So let's just save this all as we'll say uh, average math data. <clears throat> and then we'll take a look at that file. It's got 25 rows. So you can see for school year, ethnicity, you've got the average math score. Um, and so uh, this type of data structure that we talked about in the blog really simplifies um, your ability and speeds up your ability to process data requests. And here's uh, an example in which we, we save the data that was part of the request um, as a file or as another object called avg.math.data and then we use that to generate a grouped bar chart. And um, because these, these data are just completely made up um, and made up quickly, uh, it looks like all these groups are similar. But you can see that that chart is, is, uh, can be created here with this code. And then um, you can create this Word document. Oh, it looks like we got an error. delete this because I don't need that actually and create the word document and so the output now consists of a word document um, and you can play around with the layout of the graph and everything but um, a word document that has your question as well as the analysis or the as well as the, the, the graph and the results and that was the result of this code, which is now 100% um, reproducible. So someone else could open up this code, um, look to see what you did, see where they got the data, can see um, how the data files were put together, can see which school years you selected, see how you grouped your data, and how you calculated the average score. Um, as well as we'll have the code to be able to generate the graph and all of that comes together in a self-contained uh, Word document. Um, and so um, my experience is that this drastically, having this framework and especially in um, these master tables that have historical records, um, that that greatly increases the speed with which you can process data requests and improves the accuracy um, as well as um, the uh, reproducibility. So you're very transparent and others can see how you're doing it. And you yourself can see how you process the data request that may have been several years um, uh, old or you know, since you've done it. And that is all. Thank you.